and welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about how to parent your Taurus child. This is our first video on Taurus energy, so going to give you a high-level overview of what Taurus energy is all about and the main areas you should be paying attention to when you're parenting your Taurus child. But first, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free weekly positive parenting with astrology content. Uh, again, we are very close, like 28 subscribers away from monetizing this channel. Once we get to a thousand subscribers, I'll be doing a live stream videos. It's going to be very exciting. I'll be taking your Q and A's. Very, very excited about this. Also, if you're interested in booking me for an event or a group reading, whether online or in person, the link to do that is in the video description below. So let's get to it. So Taurus is fixed earth. All the earth signs are feminine energy signs. That means they approach things more from a place of intuition, feeling things out, intuiting things more than rationality. Although the earth signs are very practical and resource oriented, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Earth is a more passive energy than air and fire. Air and fire people tend to be more about resisting or forcing things or over yeah, analyzing, over-rationalizing things. Earth energy is more passive. It's about receiving and allowing. Earth people in general are better, tend to be better at flowing with the energy, as we say in the spiritual community, flowing with the energy than resisting the energy. Uh, fire people will generally actively resist things. Sometimes air people will too, although air people are more prone to being over-analytical. But earth energy is better at kind of going with the flow and allowing things. Earth people are very in tune with mother nature. So of all the signs, Taurus is the most closely associated with the earth mother. Remember the planet Venus is the ruler of Taurus. Taurus energy is a very tactile, practical, grounded energy. It is stable, reliable, and dependable. It is largely the most reliable and dependable grounded uh, sign of the three earth signs because it is fixed earth. And if your child also has their Venus in the sign of Taurus, know that that is a very comfortable placement because it's a natural placement, a natural rulership. That placement makes the chart holder very warm and affectionate. It also uh, tends to make the chart holder value things of comfort and things of beauty, artistic things. But there's also a reluctance to kind of let go emotionally because, or to release emotions because Earth is a stoic energy. It is a emotionally stoic energy. You will see that more so with the sign of Capricorn, very guarded emotionally, very stoic, very reluctant to release emotions. I think generally you see that tendency a little bit less with Taurus people, although it still exists. So while it's a very dependable sign, a reliable sign, a grounded, stabilizing influence, it is, a, it is an energy that, that has reluctance to kind of release things emotionally or get too emotional. Earth signs rely greatly on their senses, the five senses, as well as practicality and reason. They value things and understand things that they can touch, that they can literally, you know, put their arms around. They value things they can touch. They believe in things they can touch. That when I think of Capricorn energy, for example, I think of that line from uh, Jerry Maguire, show me the money, show it to me. Like, I don't believe it, you have to show it to me. I have to be able to see it, to, to smell it, to touch it. That's what I think of when I think of Taurus energy. They value things that they can touch. They understand things that they can touch, and easily grasp. Both uh, grasp in the sense of understanding it, but also physically grasp. Now, astrologer Stephen Arroyo, who I quote a lot on this channel, says this about Taurus energy. Their innate understanding of how the material world functions gives the earth signs more patience and self-discipline than other signs. They have a practical ability to utilize the material world. And that's really key when we're talking about earth energy. And you'll see that with all the earth signs. Cap, Virgo, Taurus, they have this ability to utilize things in the material world for their benefit, create things in the material world. And they value practical resources. Again, they value and understand things that they can readily grasp and touch. Taurus is associated with the second house, which is the house associated with resources, money, 
food, creature comforts, things like that, luxury items, things that give us comfort, things that we can touch, things that are of the world. It is a big stereotype of Taurus people that they're foodies, they like to eat, they like the creature comforts, and they like to be comfortable. That's largely true, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's good to want to feel comfortable, and it's good to want to engage in self-care, and Taurus is generally very good about that. It's good to recognize that you need rest. So Taurus people generally feel comfortable when they have access to those types of resources. They have access to a pantry stocked with food and snacks. They have access to a comfortable place to live. It's, a, it's an energy that needs a lot of grounding and needs a lot of stability in the day-to-day -day life. And Taurus is very much in tune with everything that the earth provides, whether that be money, creature comforts, other resources, things like that. But they're very, uh, they're very attuned to the resources provided by Mother Earth. And you'll see that with the other Earth signs. With Capricorn, Capricorn gravitates more toward, it's more about stoicism, emotional stoicism and achievement. Virgo is largely about perfection and precision. All the Earth signs are deeply connected to Mother Earth and on those resources that Mother Earth provides. So people with a strong Taurus energy, I've noticed they like to collect things. They have collections of, it could be anything. It could be seashells, it could be coins. My son, he has a second house moon, which is the house associated with Taurus. Um, and he loves to collect figurines and a bunch of different things, right? And I think, especially for kids, when they have those collections of things around them, it's very comforting. It is psychologically comforting to be surrounded by like the collection of books, for example, or collection of any little trinkets, right? Or collect some collections of some uh, knickknacks that may evoke memories that may remind them of like a really good time they had with their family or something like that. It is psychologically comforting. So if your kid, if your Taurus child tends to collect stuff, I would not dissuade that because it is comforting to them to have those things around them, around them. It, now it may be like an issue of space, lack of space. You may not know where to put everything. They may want to collect too many things. But you can deal with that, right? As soon, especially as kids get older, you can deal with that. You can look for, you know, different alternatives um, to for storage and space and things like that. But I would be careful about discouraging that collecting, that pension for collect collection because it's comforting to the Taurus child. And Taurus is an energy that is all about security. Remember, security and stability. So they feel secure when they're surrounded by those things that they've collected. Taurus also tends to be cautious, premeditative, and conventional. All the earth signs um, have an element of convention about them, right? Because they're tied toward the resources of the earth. And a lot of that has to do with, like today in society, you know, there's kind of a narrative that kids go to school, they go to college, they get a good job, they get married, they buy a house, they have, you know, their retirement account, they have these cars. And that's very consistent with the energy of the earth signs. So the risk there is that the Taurus child may be too conventional. They may get drawn into that narrative without considering, does that narrative fit like my authentic self or where I want to be in life or what I want to do with life, right? So that's the, the, the challenge with that is that they may gravitate toward those conventional norms of whatever you want to call it, achievement, success, life path, without taking the time to consider, well, maybe most other people do that, do it that way or, or choose that type of life path, but that doesn't mean that I have to choose that life path. So that's one thing you wanna be careful of, is your Taurus child um, choosing a life path that is authentic for them, that feels good for them, or are they choosing it because that's what they're expected to choose, that's where they're expected to go, or that's what everybody else is doing, that's the convention, that's the norm, so that's what I will do. So you always want to be careful about that dynamic and attune to that in your Taurus child. Now, fixed earth is a slower energy. If you're a parent that has a lot of fire in their chart or a lot of air in their chart, you may find this hard to deal with sometimes, but you're just going to have to remember that's the nature of the sign. It is a slower, it's a fixed energy. It is a slower energy. That is just how the child naturally is, unless they have like a lot of air and fire in their chart to go with the Taurus sun or Taurus moon. 
So you're going to have to accept that's how they are naturally. And you'll have to deal with your own impatience. Remember that you're the adult, you're the parent, you're the one that has to deal with the impatience that that causes you. So Stephen Arroyo also says that Taurus children have this kind of innate sense about the rhythm of life, this patience for the rhythm of life. Taurus, I've noticed that Taurus is one of the signs that is most able to be in the present moment. Remember we said it's a slower energy and this is a positive aspect of that slower energy. Taurus is much more able than other energies to live in that present moment, to exist in that present moment and look around and take in everything that is happening and the wonders that the earth is providing in that moment, as opposed to anticipating the next moment, the next moment, the next moment, like an impatient Gemini would. Ask me how I know about that, right? So Taurus is very good at making kind of short or, long, short or midterm sacrifices for longer term gains. Capricorn and Virgo are also pretty good at that. This is a wonderful trait to have, both that living in the present moment and that making those shorter term sacrifices for longer term gains. Because I'm sure you've realized most people in today's society have trouble with that. They struggle with that, both being in the present moment because they have so much going on and so much to do and so much on their minds that they're constantly thinking like 10, 15, 20 steps ahead. And also it's, you know, in this age of instant gratification, right? It's harder and harder to make those shorter term sacrifices. People, people don't wanna make those shorter term sacrifices or midterm sacrifices. Even if they can consider and think about longer term gains, it's hard just because of the society in which we live. You can get almost anything you want through delivery now, sometimes the same day. So it's harder than ever to exert patience and make those shorter term sacrifices for the longer term goals, that stoicism we talked about earlier. But Taurus is very good at that. So that's a really great trait that your Taurus child has that should be praised and encouraged. Taurus is also very good in a crisis. It is a very dependable sign like Capricorn, right? So Taurus people also have tend to have a pretty even temperament, although they can be very stubborn, especially when things are not happening at the pace at, at, what, at what they want, the pace that they want. Like if things are happening too slowly for them or too quickly for them, they can get really bad of shape about that. So remember, the symbol for Taurus is the bull. So yes, there is certainly a level of stubbornness with Taurus energy. They do not like to feel rushed. Remember, we said it, it's a slower energy. They hate to feel rushed. They will get really bad of shape if you rush them. So in fact, if the more you rush them, the slower they will tend to be. So this is a scenario that I hear a lot about as a parent that I've experienced myself multiple times when you're trying to get your tourist child out of the house, right? And you're rushing, they're not gonna rush for you. And the more you rush them, the slower they're gonna be and the more impatient they're gonna be and the more time they're gonna take. So the best way I think about, of dealing with that is to build in extra time. It's hard to do, I know, especially if you have multiple kids, but if you can build in extra time so that your Taurus child has enough time to do what they need to do at the pace at which they want to do it, okay? So what do Taurus children need? Predictable parenting, stable parenting. They need to know what's coming next. All kids need all that to a degree, but Earth kids, especially Taurus, which is fixed Earth, really, really, really need that. The consistent parenting, the predictable parenting, they need to know what's coming next. They don't like surprises generally, okay? They need stability, they need a stable home life, they need security, security about resources too. So definitely this is not a child you wanna make flippant remarks around such as we don't have enough money for that or I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to pay for that this month or you know, I can't afford that. Sometimes parents make these really flippant remarks about money and they don't realize how damaging it is to the kids because the kids are left with these questions like, we don't have enough money for that. Well, will we have enough money next month? Do we, are we gonna lose the house? Are we gonna have enough money for food? Are we gonna have enough money to do the activities that I want? And the parents sometimes don't, I mean, they don't intend to cause that anxiety in the children, but sometimes those flippant remarks parents make about money to the kids, they have a really negative effect. And Taurus is energy where you definitely don't wanna be making those flippant remarks about lack of resources, because that will provoke anxiety in the Taurus child about a perceived lack of resources. So you wanna be really careful what you say about resources, money, being able to afford things. I have a lot to say on how we talk to our children about money. We do not have time to go over all that in this episode, 
but I will be doing more episodes about that. And I will be featuring Taurus energy in those episodes because it is a resource oriented energy, as we said earlier. So stay tuned for that. So how else can you help your, your Taurus child? Prepare them ahead of time. Remember, no surprises if you can help it. Consistent communication, okay? If you're all over the place, like a Gemini parent sometimes is, we are inconsistent, that's just kind of how we are. It's something you have to work on. Consistent parenting, consistent communication, consistent um, emotions. That's another big one. Allow your Taurus child to take their time with things. We talked about that already. And do not suggest to your Taurus child that they are somehow weird or abnormal for being conventional, especially if you are a person who, like me, tends not to follow convention, okay? That's also a risk. If the parent is like an unconventional Aquarius and the, the child is has a lot of Taurus energy and the child tends to, tends to gravitate more toward conventional things, that's another risk where the parent thinks, bah, you're just doing what the masses do. Well, not necessarily. We talked earlier about the risk of a Taurus child doing what the masses are doing because the masses are doing it, because that's the convention. The other risk is that the Taurus child follows the convention because that is what they want. And the parent suggests, why are you following the convention when you can do all these other things? So you just want to be very careful about the messaging that you're sending to your Taurus child. You want to uh, openly communicate with them, but in a way that is not criticizing their values and their actions, especially as they get older and they're individuating more from the parent and their uh, preferences, their values are going to differ from the parents. Now I've talked about this tendency when I've talked about Virgo and especially Capricorn. With earth children, there is almost always a risk of parentifying them. What does that mean? That means when the parent treats the child as if the child is the parent. When the parent relies on the child for adult level responsibility that is not appropriate, okay? Now, kids should get age appropriate responsibility. Absolutely, the more the better, okay? As long as it's age appropriate, that's the key. But if the parent is harnessing the child with too much like adult level responsibility, it gets very burdensome. And it's not emotionally healthy because a child is gonna feel a lot of guilt when they can't do the adult level responsibility just because they're not ready to because they're kids. So there's almost always a risk with earth kids because earth energy is a very stabilizing, grounding, predictable energy. And if the parent has any unpredictability, um, you know, it, it's, it's almost always a risk for the parent to rely on the earth child for that stability when the reverse should be true. The child needs to be relying on the parent for the stability, not the parent relying on the child. Now it's fine, you know, when the parent, um, sometimes just by virtue of being a parent, you have an impetus for self-improvement. That was the case with me. That's, that's one thing and that's great, but you should not be relying on the kid to provide the stability in your life. You need to be creating the stability in your life for your kid. And Earth kids tend to take on responsibility, even adult level responsibility, very easily. It comes almost naturally to them because they're so grounded and stable. It makes them feel good or important or worthy on some level to have that level of responsibility. But we need to make sure we're not burdening them with too much responsibility that is not appropriate for their age. You know, when I was about, I guess, 14 or 15, I'm the oldest of three, but you know, if you watch this channel for a while, and my father died when I was 11. So my mom was raising three of us. And I was, you know, um, I mean, my childhood ended at 11, essentially. And I was in charge of my two younger siblings. And as soon as I could drive, I was driving them around and t doing them, you know, doing errands for them and taking them where they needed to go and things like this. And my mother made comments to me such as, you are the nucleus of this family. You are the center of this family. You are the rock of this family. And frankly, now as an adult, I realize how inappropriate that was because you were, she was essentially putting this adult level responsibility on my shoulders, this responsibility for the family that I was somehow 100% responsible to the family, that the health of the family depended on me because I'm quote, the rock of this family. That's an incredible amount of pressure and a huge burden to place on a teenager. And it is not appropriate. So that's what I'm, what I'm cautioning against here is that those statements, even though there's no ill intent from the parent, even though they, the parent may be intending to convey something positive or praise to the child, those phrases can be very damaging because you're burdening the child with this incredible amount of 
adult level responsibility that they're not ready for. And that risks, you know, raising a child into an adult who is very comfortable taking on way more burdens than they should be. So you want to be very careful about doing that. Better to praise a Taurus child by saying things like this. I love how dependable you are. I love how your friends can always rely on you. I love what a stable influence you are on your friends. Or I love the fact that you are so loyal to your friends. All those things are great. Like you're praising the child's qualities without suggesting that they're somehow responsible for their friend's well-being or the well-being of the family or the emotional health of the family. So yeah, the main message I want to convey here is that the parent should be the one providing the stabilizing influence to the Taurus child. We should not be relying on the Taurus children to provide that stabilizing, predictable influence for us. Although there are many benefits to having a Taurus child, many of which we've talked about today. It's a very stable, predictable energy, okay? It's not a crazy air sign who's running all over the place, changing their mind every five seconds. So, it, that can make it, I don't want to say easier to parent a Taurus child, but that can make it less of a challenge in some way to parent an Earth child, although you have the stubbornness and the other things that we talked about. So every sign brings its, you know, really good stuff, right? But that's the main message I wanted to convey, that, that while it's a stabilizing energy, the parent needs to make sure that they are prov the ones providing the stable home life for the Taurus child, that the Taurus child needs and craves in order to feel fulfilled. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I am still taking requests for videos. I am still working through a backlog of requests that I have. This video is one of them. So if you have a request for a video or an energy combination you would like to see, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.